Hello everyone, Alicia here, and welcome to this week's video. Today I have two paintings to share with you. They were both originally painted to serve the same purpose as I was trying to make mini print art for my patrons for the month of February, but I really wasn't satisfied with this first piece, so I ended up painting a second one, and I thought it would be a good opportunity to talk with you about the difference between going into a painting with a plan and going into a painting without a plan. So on the first painting, I had been scrambling that whole morning trying to latch onto an idea and have something that I connected with at all and I struggled. And with the second one, I had a clear vision. So I want to share with you a bit about the difference from these two processes and just, you know, kind of share my thoughts and experiences with you. So with this first painting, I leaned pretty heavily on tiny little things that I was able to grasp that I knew that I would enjoy or that I wanted for a painting without having a larger view of basically anything like the colors or the composition or the focal point, and it really did affect every aspect of this painting. So the few things I knew that I wanted were I knew I wanted to have some sort of loose abstract foliage at the top, I wanted a floating head, and I wanted to focus on the nose and the mouth. That sounds like a pretty good start, I think, for a painting, but I was missing a few key points in my painting planning process that ultimately led to this one feeling really weird overall. So I didn't do any thumbnail sketches for this painting, which meant that I didn't have a good idea of the value range, like where I wanted things to be lighter and where I wanted them to be darker. So I basically spent the entire painting process just drifting around this one and making very spontaneous and impulsive decisions. Now, this may not sound necessarily like a bad thing, and that's because sometimes it's not. This was definitely like a journey painting, almost like the kind of thing that you paint just for the sake of painting it, like going on a walk to calm down or just doing a, an activity for the sake of doing it and not necessarily to have accomplished a specific task or to get somewhere. You just do it to do it. And when it comes to this process, the individual steps I really enjoyed and I really liked, but because I didn't have a destination in mind while working on this painting, I never really arrived anywhere. And it wasn't really a matter of going, okay, I've achieved what I wanted to achieve with this painting, so I knew that it was finished. I didn't really finish this painting because I didn't make a finish line for myself. I just, it just kind of ended. I just got to a point where I was like, okay, I'm not doing any more on this. And it ultimately made the process itself rather enjoyable. It also made it way longer than it needed to be, which I'll talk about in a second. But the ultimate ending place that I got to was not very satisfying. So when I look back on this painting, even though I don't think it's bad, I have this sense of dissatisfaction because I didn't really know where I was going with it. And so now that I'm at the end, I don't really know what it's saying because I didn't have a goal or a strong like thematic or emotional attachment to it. So I just look at it and I go, oh, there it is. And then it's easier for me to just pick out things I don't like about it instead of enjoying the things that I thought were successful because I didn't set goals. So there was nothing for me to succeed at. So I can just see, you know, technical, not, I don't want to say failures, but basically when I look back on this one, it just feels like a lost painting. Like it's just wandering and doesn't really know where it is or where it's going. So I don't know. I don't, I don't really like that feeling. I also mentioned that this one took me way longer than it needed to. Now, compared to the other painting, this one is much larger. This one ultimately is maybe 
like 12 inches by 14 inches and the other painting is only 7 by 10 inches so this one's actually a little over double the size of the other one which is a good reason for a painting to take longer because it's larger but when you don't have a goal you can't see the steps from the beginning to the end like I could with the second one so with this one it took me two and a half hours from start to finish, which isn't necessarily a very long time for a painting, but when most of that time is spent wandering and feeling like I'm not really getting anywhere, then that two and a half hours feels like a very long time. I am able to look at this piece in little bits and appreciate certain things about it. I like the layering, I like the brush strokes, I like the ear and some of the color combinations I used. This one also fell victim to that most common issue I have when I don't plan a painting that I've talked about lots of times, which is I didn't have a plan for which colors I wanted to use, so I basically just used all of them and they weren't balanced super well. You can have a really colorful painting with a very large, you know, range of colors, but without those colors being properly balanced, it can just kind of miss the mark thematically, or it can distract from whatever the focus of the painting is supposed to be. So those are the sorts of things that I see when I look at this one. And I knew that I wasn't 100% satisfied with it after the first day of working on it, because that two and a half hours was split over a couple of different days. And I remember telling myself after the first day that if I got up the next morning and looked at it and I didn't like it, that I was just gonna like dump the entire painting and all of this footage and just start from scratch with a new video for this week. But ultimately, I thought that I could pull it to an interesting place and just reconcile myself with the fact that I was gonna enjoy the journey even if I didn't know where I was going. Sometimes that works out well and sometimes that leads to a painting that I really like, and other times when I know I want to be more focused or I want to convey a particular message, it just leaves me feeling dissatisfied and like I didn't make the progress I wanted to make. And I'm glad I at least put in the effort so that I could share this whole situation and experience with all of you. But then it's kind of interesting because in a way this painting is just a little bit of where my brain is at right now. I've been feeling like I need to just kind of hit the reset button on everything, you know? Like I need to refocus on what I want out of basically my entire life. And I have a lot of individual pieces that are exactly what I want, but I need something new and fresh and to have a specific goal in mind. And I feel like I've been wandering for a little while now without having that, you know, specific goal in mind. So in that way, I guess this piece is a good representation of that.
this second painting, it was a completely different situation. Where the last painting took me two and a half hours to paint, this one took me just under half an hour, and that doesn't necessarily mean that a painting is better just because it takes less time, but for me this was a clear example of having a goal and knowing how to achieve it, knowing that I can achieve it, and then just ticking off boxes as I go along. So I set out knowing that this was going to be a simpler, quicker concept to execute and to make, and then I just did it. I already had an idea of the colors I wanted to use. I even knew that I wanted to use this large flat brush for the initial layers. I wanted one big wet wash across the entire painting that slowly like shifted from cooler tones into warmer tones, and I wanted that to be reflected even as I began to sculpt out the face. And I even had a pretty good idea of what colors I wanted to use from this watercolor set. So right from the beginning, I just had a clear idea of what I wanted to do here. I could picture which brushes I wanted to use, I could picture the steps I wanted to take, and the little things that I wanted to do that would add dimension and add interest to the painting, and I could see it more clearly. That doesn't happen all the time, and for me personally, it's almost a frustrating thing not being able to pin that feeling down all the time. Like, these little like bits of clarity where I'm in a forest and I can just peek through the trees and see exactly where I'm going. It happens very infrequently, and I know that every artist's experience is going to be different, but it's so hard for me usually to clearly visualize a concept in terms of like the steps to take to get there. That it's, yeah, that like I said, it's almost frustrating that I can't pin that down and generate that just through like sheer force of will. But it is an exciting thing to feel when I do feel it. I wanted lots of soft values and overlapping shapes in this painting, and that was what I got. I had a destination in mind, so there was just this huge sense of satisfaction when I got there. I could feel myself getting closer and closer to it every step of the way, and I knew when I had arrived, and that feeling, like the, the two painting experiences, I can't even articulate properly and fully enough how different it felt to make these paintings. One was just wandering around and the other was climbing up a trail that maybe I'd never been on that particular trail before, but I knew the steps to take to get to the end of it. Let me know if anything I've described here resonates with you, if it sounds familiar, if you've had similar experiences, or if you find that most of your painting experiences are like one side or the other of the spectrum, which it really is. It's not like painting is always one or the other. It really is a spectrum, and, and all painting experiences can fall somewhere in between these two that I have here. Both of these paintings will be listed for sale on my website, and the second painting will be February's mini print, so you can sign up to get one of those over on Patreon if you'd like before February 1st. As always, a huge thank you to my patrons and my members. I will also be featuring the second painting as this month's real-time video, so that will be going up very soon. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'd love to know what you think, so leave a comment down below, and I will talk to you all next week. Bye-bye. Thank you.